Hello everyone, and welcome back to Double Buff. It's been quite some time, as today we're finally putting our procrastination to the side to bring you this old man's legendary weapon guide. We'll be following the same format as with Titus's Kalibog and Yuna's Nirvana, in the order of first obtaining the weapon, finding the crest, winning its sigil, and lastly, empowering the weapon where we'll talk about its very unique damage output and why the sword holds a special place among the other legendary weapons. Without further ado, let's take our first steps in claiming Orin's legendary weapon, the Masa Mune. The first step in claiming the weapon starts in the Calmlands just before Mount Gagazet. You have to drop into the ravine near the Cavern of the Stolen Faith. Once down there, just follow the cliffside to the end of the path to find the rusty sword surrounded by some debris and ex-members of the Crusaders. Pressing X on the sword will prompt the message saying you picked it up. Now with the sword, we're going to take it to Mushroom Rock Road, but be careful when traveling by airship not to run into the Dark Maga Sisters. The easiest way to avoid this is by selecting Jose Temple, where you'll actually spawn on the beach between Jose and Mushroom Rock Road. If you have any no encounter weapons, now would be a good time to equip one. As you can see, battles are frequent in this area, and you'll save yourself a couple of minutes. Travel down the road, where you'll see an alcove branch off to the left of the screen. In the alcove is a special platform that will raise you to a hidden Lord Meehan statue. Once you've ridden the platform, you'll use the rusty sword on the statue. After the cutscene, a glyph will appear on the wall. You'll use the celestial mirror on this glyph, causing another cutscene to happen, where you'll finally have acquired the Masamune. Now that we have the sword, the next step is finding the crest. You can acquire the crest at any point in the game, and it can be found at the very end of the Meehan Low Road. The fastest and easiest way is to rent a chocobo and follow the old road all the way to the very end. You'll pass a save sphere, and eventually you'll reach a dead end containing the chest. Now that you have the sword and the crest, the third step is obtaining the sigil through the monster arena. It's fairly simple, but can be a very time consuming process. You have to unlock any combination of 10 area conquest or species conquest fiends. An area conquest fiend is unlocked by collecting one of every fiend in an area such as Besaid or Kilika. Like on screen right now, Collecting all three of these fiends on Vesade will unlock one area conquest monster. However, a species conquest monster is unlocked by capturing each type of a particular fiend. For example, there are multiple birds that look like Condor across Sphera. Catching so many of each version of it will unlock its species conquest fiend. In total, you have to get 10 area or species conquest fiends unlocked to acquire the sigil. The easiest way to get the sigil is by making your way through each area collecting at least one of each fiend. On screen will be a brief overview of each fiend in the easiest 10 areas to collect them. Feel free to pause the video at any point if need be. The first area on the list is Besaid, which will be the easiest area to go to. There are simply three fiends here to collect. Second is Kilika, which only has four fiends, all of which spawn between the village and the temple. Next is going to be Meehan High Road, which complicates things slightly with eight fiends. The two on the right 
Vorvor, and Iperia can only be found on the low road. Next, there are only seven fiends in Mushroom Rock Road. The Thunderflan can be found in the main road, while Garuda and Fungar can only be found on the path towards Operation Mehem. But be careful, the Dark Magus sisters spawn in this area. After Mushroom Rock Road is a combination of Jose and Moonflow for a total of seven fiends, most of which can be found in Jose. However, the Ochu can only be found on the first half of the Moonflow before you take the ferry. Next comes the Thunder Plains. Everything spawns in the same area here, with the exception of the Iron Giant, who only spawns on the half of the plains closest to Makalania. Speaking of Makalania, we'll go over that next as we've reached our first area with double digit fiends. Almost half of these fiends, Igwion, Mrusu, the Blue Element, Xyphos, Wasp, and Chimera spawn in the forest while the other four spawn between the travel agency and the temple. After Makalania is the Calm Lands, and we'll have to do this area for Yuna's Nirvana as well. The larger creatures like the Anacondor and the Malboro are in the northwest region of the map, while everything else can be found just about all over. The Cavern of the Stolen Faith, or the Sunken Cave, based on the version of the game that you have, holds nine specific fiends and a few from the calm lands spawn here as well. The Tonberry seems to be the only fiend I struggled to find. However, they seem to spawn more when you begin to fight near the Pyreflies. I cannot, however, confirm that this is 100% accurate. And finally, we have Mount Gagazette slash Xanarkand, with the largest amount of fiends for a grand total of 12. This area is also on the to-do list for Yuna's Nirvana. The four fiends on the top row can be found on the slopes climbing up Gagazet. The Mandragora, Behemoth, Ariamon, Darkflan, and Grendel can all be found inside the cave. And finally, the Male Spike, Splasher, and Aculus can all be found in the water area of the cavern. You can check your progress by talking to the owner of the monster arena and looking at the selection of enemies available to fight. Any that are blacked out or don't have a name by them, you still need to collect. Every time you collect all the fiends of an area, the owner will give you a gift and a free crack at the monstrosity that they just created. After the 10th one, he will also praise your progress and reward you with the sigil. Now that we have everything we need, we can go upgrade the Masamune. Once it has been fully upgraded, the Masamune has the standard break damage limit and triple overdrive, as well as first strike and counter attack. Each celestial weapon is connected to an Aeon, and when the weapon is improved, that Aeon gains the ability to break the damage limit. The Masamune is actually connected to Yojimbo. However, as I said at the beginning of the video, the weapon has a very unique function compared to the other celestial weapons. This sword allows Orin to do more damage the more injured he is, while the other celestial weapons actually increase their user's damage the closer to full HP they have. The sheet on the screen shows how much of a damage increase Orin has compared to what percentage of health he is at. I hope this video cleared up any confusion you may have had. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.